Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here with my very late April anticipated releases. Um, maybe I should just start calling these videos like new releases or uh, something like that because obviously these are not like anticipated anymore because April's over. <laughs> um, but I had to refilm this because I just wasn't happy with how it turned out and in my continuing quest to make editing these simpler for me and to hopefully keep me um, on schedule better, I am gonna try something this time where I like group the book images by date as well. Um, so when I'm talking about April 4th, for example, I will try and fit all of the book covers that are uh, for the books coming out that day. Um, I think that'll be easier for me and also maybe helpful for you guys. If it doesn't work, like if it's too crowded or hard to see them, um, I'll figure something else out, but let's just try it for this one and see how it goes. As always, I will link my 2023 playlist down below. Um, I'm doing these videos monthly, or <laughs> roughly at least, and I'm also going to pin a comment that has the links to, like the Goodreads links to all of the books I'm going to talk about. So, Let's just jump in. As per usual, this is a huge mix of things, and I know varying amounts about them. Um, so on April 1st, I have A Girl Called Samson by Amy Harmon. I really enjoy Amy Harmon. She writes historical books that also blend other genres. Um, they tend to have a, uh, a romance element. Sometimes they have a little bit of a speculative twist, um, and sometimes there's like a mystery as well. And this one is, um, I think, mainly historical with a romance. It takes place during the Revolutionary War, um, the American Revolution specifically which I feel like is a weirdly underutilized time period for like American historical books. Um, but yeah, it follows a main character who goes undercover um, as a soldier in the Revolutionary Army. Women weren't allowed um, to be soldiers, but she dressed up as a boy um, in order to fight. And I believe it's based on true stories because I know there were actually several women in American history who did this. And I just tend to really enjoy Amy Harmon's books. I can't wait for this one. Um, then on April 4th, I have four books. Um, a Whole Song and Dance by Sarvanaz Tosh. This is a contemporary following our main character who is going to a really prestigious uh, performance school. I think it might be Tish, but I'm not sure, which is like a very big deal um, for like performance schools. And um, I don't remember if she's like getting into a new program or like how exactly this is happening, but um, apparently her parents are under the impression that she is studying, I think, business, and she hasn't told them that she's actually studying musical theater. Um, yeah, so as I have mentioned somewhat recently, I'm in not a great place with theater things right now, um, so I probably won't be picking this one up in the near future, but I think it sounds fantastic, and I definitely am excited for this, and I want uh, people to know about it. Um, it sounds really good. Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I am here yet again with a Rebecca Ross book that I'm excited about, despite still not having read one of her books. Like, at this point, I'm embarrassed. Like, this is ridiculous. But anyway, um, Divine Rivals is the first in a series, and I think it might be, like, World War One era historical fantasy. I know it's definitely a fantasy, and I think it is, like, loosely inspired by um, the early 1900s, and it's a hate-to-love romance. Um, there is, like, a great war going on, and there might be, like, letters involved. I think it's, like, a situation where the two main characters hate each other, but then they end up exchanging letters and starting to like each other instead. Um, I feel like I'm gonna love Rebecca Ross. Someday I will read her. Um, the Last Heir to Blackwood Library by Hester Fox. Um, this is post-World War I, um, and we're following our main character who inherits Blackwood Library, um, and it's like this really strange and mysterious, possibly spooky, um, like, manor or house, and it's about what happens there. She has to, like, solve this mystery. The Plus One by Maisie Eddings is a contemporary romance that features fake dating and hate to love, which are two of my favorite tropes. Um, our two main characters have been like rivals. They really disliked each other for a long time, um, but they end up getting thrown together as part of, I think, like the wedding party, or maybe they're just guests for like a really long like wedding event slash vacation trip or something. And rather than being hounded for being single, they decide that they're going to fake date so that people leave them alone. Um, and of course, they end up falling in love instead. Even though I love Hate to Love, I am a very hard sell on it in contemporaries, um, so we'll see how this goes, but it sounds really fun. On April 6th, I think I just have one book, and that is It's Not That Radical by Michaela Loach. Um, this is a nonfiction book that is about the climate crisis and, like, things that we can do and how they are not that radical, um, and, like, they're necessary and they're important, 
um, and like we should feel a sense of urgency, but like it's not out of the realms of possibility. Um, a quote from the synopsis is, for too long representations of climate action in the mainstream media have been whitewashed, greenwashed, and diluted to be made compatible with ca with capitalism. Um, so basically this is pushing back against all of those and it is, it seems like it's going to be a very like reasonable, thoughtful, but also hopeful and actionable book, which I think is really important. On April 11th, I have three books. Atlanta by Jennifer Saint. Um, I finally read Ariadne by this author and loved it, so I am basically excited for anything she writes. Um, this is a historical fiction book that is based on or inspired by Atlanta, who is a Greek hero who I think she was the only female Argonaut. Um, and I think that sounds just really, really interesting. Um, I know that I like the way that Jennifer Saint writes historical female stories, so I trust her for this one too. Harvest House by Cynthia Lydic Smith. Um, this is a spooky young adult novel, I think. Um, and I actually, Michelle from Thor Wants Another Letter mentioned that it's actually connected to several of Cynthia Lydic Smith's other books, which I didn't realize. Um, so that's going to be cool as well. I don't remember much about this except like spooky. It's by a native author and I think it's going to be really interesting. And A Sky Full of Song by Susan Lynn Meyer. This is basically a kind of prairie story. Um, it's set around, I think, 1905, and we're following a Jewish family who has fled Russia. I really love seeing um, like very familiar like premises or time periods and telling those stories from perspectives that we don't often see because this was a real thing that happened. Like there were like lots of Jewish immigrants who left Europe um, and who came to the U.S. around this time and we just we don't tend to think of those in terms of like prairie stories or like this this kind of historical fiction. So I think that sounds really interesting. I know this is going to deal with Jewish practices and culture and I think our main character's older sister um, is trying to kind of like hide her Jewishness because she wants to fit in better and then our younger main character is trying to uh, figure out what she wants to do because she doesn't really want to lose that connection. On April 15th, I have just one book. That is House Perilous by Tansy Rayner Roberts. Um, this is the second book in her Sparks and Filters series, which I'm trying to remember the like description from the back. It was something like, like historical fantasy with a little bit of coziness and it's like fairy Victoriana, I think, because <laughs> um, it's set around the Victorian period, like loosely inspired by the Victorian period. Um, I read the first book in April and absolutely loved it. It might be one of my, it might be my favorite thing I've read by this author and so I'm very excited for the second book. I actually do already have it because again April is over um, but I'm really excited to read that and I just love the way that she writes characters and her like settings and stories are so fascinating. Um, like I love her ideas and I'm excited about this one. On April 18th I have one, two, three books. Um, the first one is Dear Mama God by Deneen Akers illustrated by Gillian Gamble. Um, this is a picture book that is uh, basically about feminine language for the divine um, and specifically how in Christian circles that has been often erased from translations. Like if you use more accurate translations, which this picture book does, there's a lot of language in the Bible um, that is actually using like female imagery and metaphor and even though like there is no gender for God or the divine, um, it is important to like reclaim the possibility of like viewing God like a mother or um, as like a feminine, like having like feminine uh, qualities as well. And I actually have already read this one so you will hear more about it but I thought this was really really beautiful. I think this is such an important book to have especially as like a picture book you know like for um, children or for young readers and I just think it's a really important idea. A great example of something that is more inclusive and more accurate at the same time. Sisters of the Lost Nation by Nick Medina. A young native girl's hunt for answers about the women mysteriously disappearing from her tribe's reservation lead her to delve into the myths and stories of her people all while being haunted herself in this atmospheric and stunningly poignant debut. Um, so this is a mystery thriller that sounds like it might have some horror elements. Um, you guys know I don't read a lot of horror, but I think this one, like I'll, I'll look at reviews, but this one sounds like one I might get along with. Um, and The Piper's Promise by Leah Saipes. This is the third book in the Sisters Ever After series, which I just found out there's actually going to be a fourth book coming out in I think December of this year, so I'm very excited. Um, but I've been loving this series. This is a series of fairy tale retellings where uh, we're, like the author's like reimagining famous fairy tales as if the main character of those fairy tales had a younger sister. Um, and so this one is a Pied Piper retelling as if the Pied Piper had a, a younger sister. So I can't wait for that. I have loved both other books in the series. On April 25th, I have three books to talk about. Money Out Loud, All the Financial Stuff No One Taught Us by Berna Anat. This is a nonfiction book that is basically what it says in the title. Um, a lot of like useful financial information. I think especially for like young people figuring these things out, but honestly it probably could help 
anybody who has questions about any kind of financial things. Um, this looks like it's gonna be very approachable and just like really useful and basic. Like um, I know me and my friends like frequently have conversations about like how even though we all took economics, we really didn't learn a lot of like useful financial information, like practical things. And I think that's what this is going to be. That Self Same Metal by Brittany Ann Williams. This is um, like the thing that got me, the premise of this is a black girl fighting a fae uprising in Elizabethan England amazing like give it to me now that sounds incredible um and then an improbable season by rosalind eaves um this is a historical book and i think we're following three main characters um who are these three women who are really close i can't remember if they are related or if they're good friends um or both but they are going to london for the season and they all have different intentions for what they want to achieve there um one of them is really into the sciences i think and so she wants to like pursue learning um one of them is looking to marry well and then i can't remember what the third one is after. Um, but basically everyone kind of gets into uh, things that they didn't intend. They get um, sort of mixed up, they end up finding that maybe what they want isn't what they thought they wanted after all, um, and it looks like it's gonna have some really great female friendship and maybe some like romances as well. And I'm really hoping that it is going to look at the many kinds of like interests and the many like kinds of feminist that you can be, because um, that's one of the reasons that I don't usually gravitate towards historical books that feature women in the sciences, even though I think those are really important. I feel like so often there is just so much internalized misogyny there um, for women who are more feminine or who are more interested in like traditionally female things. And I just find it really hard to take, especially in a book that is like supposed to be very, very feminist um, to just, I, I just hate reading that. Um, I hate reading that kind of like internalized misogyny and the girl on girl hate and everything, the not like other girls. We know that's like one of my least favorite things so that's why i don't tend to pick up like historical books that feature um those kinds of ideas even though i again i think they are important but this one i think and i hope sounds like it's going to approach these um approach these as like equally viable interests which i think is great and then finally i think the last book i have to talk about for april comes out on april 30th and that is the real bridgerton by katherine curzon um this is a non-fiction book and uh obviously the title is a reference to the bridgerton book series and TV series. I have never read or watched it and I have absolutely no interest in it. I know I would not like it, um, but I do like historical nonfiction and so this really intrigues me. Um, the, the, a line from the synopsis says, behind the headlines and the breathless whispers in Regency ballrooms were real people living real lives in a tumultuous, unforgiving era. Um, so it basically talks about like the real scandals um, and the real stories behind um, like various like famous people and famous incidents and basically it's like things that are things that occurred during this era that are perhaps even more interesting or shocking than like historical fiction or historical romance books can make it seem um i think like there's another line from the synopsis that's like if you thought bridgerton was as what was it like was as like misbehaving as the georgians got then think again or something like that so that's i think the premise of it it sounds super interesting Okay, so those were my anticipated releases slash new slash already come out releases <laughs> um, for April. I'm sorry this is late, but I am hoping that with my new like cover idea that this is maybe going to be quicker to edit. We'll see. Um, so let me know if having like multiple covers is like distracting or if you're okay with it. Um, I, hopefully I have enough room so that you can actually see the covers. But anyway, um, let me know if you are excited about any of these or maybe you've already read them because, you know, they've come out. And let me know um, an April new release that you're really looking forward to, whether or not you've already read it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!